I love this top when I'm sewing because it's just like, whoop, and you can try it on. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wendy and here we are all about instilling sewing inspiration as well as sewing confidence so that you really believe you can do it because you can. I'm self-taught and I've been making stuff, so here we are. Today we're gonna to take on the challenge of the perfect fit. The tool that has made it possible for me to make this and this and this and even this in the last year are these bodice blocks. I got these from a class I took in Toronto. This one is my perfect fit back. This one is my perfect fit front. So let's get you yours. We're gonna do two methods. The first one is free and it involves a lot of measurements. And the second one is not free, but it only uses one measurement. I'm also kind of intrigued how that's gonna turn out. To really show off this perfect fit challenge, this is the inspo that I'm referencing for our finished project today. I'm gonna to show you how a pattern turns into a 3D item that fits you like a glove. This is from Paris, Georgia. I think it comes in a tank top, but it also as a bodysuit. And the main feature is the sweetheart in the front. But what makes it look expensive is if everything lies flat along the chest, but it still hugs all your curves going down all the way around there's definitely some fit challenges here. I would not have attempted this a year ago, but now I've got my bodice blocks. And this video is sponsored by Function of Beauty, so I'm gonna share about that later. First, let's talk about materials. You're gonna need large paper, such as newspaper. We're gonna use craft paper, so it's just easier for you to see what we're doing. A pencil, eraser, pen, bonus if you happen to have a tracing wheel, fabric scissors and regular scissors, non-stretch woven fabric because we really want the fabric to stay true and not lie to us by stretching around, and a hard and a soft measuring device. Bonus if you have a curved ruler, but you definitely can make do without one. I did some research to try to find us a really good blog post to draft a bodice block with, and I found this one on In The Folds. This looks pretty good, namely because they ask for a lot of measurements, and I appreciate that. I'll put a link to this blog in the description, but this is what we're going to start with. Julie and I did my measurements according to what they listed, and then Julia followed the instructions to draw out the entire front and back of the bodice. So here we have a front and a back. These are gonna get traced onto some sample fabric to see how close we landed on our first try. These are the two back pieces, and they both need the darts put into them here and here. The front piece is just one complete piece. It also needs its darts sewn in. And then they can be sewn together at the shoulders, at the sides, and the back stays open so you can get in and out. I put in the pins so that they line up with the dart line on both sides, and that kind of like brings it all together. So now comes the part where you just assess whether it feels like it's hitting all the right spots. So for example, at the neck here, I feel like it's cutting me off just a little bit. So we could draw a new line that drops this, maybe even just like a centimeter, I think. But the back seems very close. And see how it's just like all smooth, no bumps. That's good. Okay, and same with the armhole. You can see from when I'm lowering my arm, this is really digging into the armpit. This is pretty tight too. We'll start here and taper out a centimeter, a centimeter, I'm trying to look at the back. Maybe a centimeter on the back too. See how there's like the armpit pinch? Crazy. This is way closer <laughs> than I thought we were going to land. Based on this first fit test, you can draw the areas of change, such as in my case, making the armhole a bit bigger and the neck hole a bit deeper. Normally you can do this even with a pencil, but we're just using a marker to make it easy for you to see. After cutting these problem areas off to ease up the fit, I tried it on again, and then we transferred those correct adjustments to the paper pattern. So now you can sew a draft two and try that on as needed. If your first draft doesn't feel remotely close, just focus on fixing one thing at a time since as you change one thing, 
like if you bring this in, everything else rises. So it affects elsewhere, just do one at a time. I generally prioritize getting the bust line right, which is the line that crosses between the two peaks of your boobs. And you can raise and lower it by adjusting your shoulder seams. Once the height's right, then you can focus on their horizontal separation. And for that, you can just pinch this center seam sew it down to reduce the fabric or add some fabric on your draft to increase the distance. Once that's good, the rest gets a little bit more straightforward. You want your shoulders and your sides to lie flat, not too tight, not too loose. A good tip for adjustments actually is to try it on inside out. You can pinch any parts of the darts that need to be taken in. You can just literally pin them. By the time you get to trimming the neck, the armhole or the waist like I was, you should be very close. So in that sense, this was actually a pretty, I guess, big compliment to the In The Folds vlog because right off the bat, the adjustments were pretty straightforward and it was just a little bit of trimming and a little bit of sewing needed. I approve. Now, before we show you how draft two turned out of us following a blog, I wanted to go into some other alternatives to draft your own bodice block. There are ready-made drafting kits, which should make the process easier. This company, Lutterlow, reached out to me to ask if I wanted to try their golden rule system. And I said yes right away because, I don't know, I feel like if this is effective, you guys should definitely know about it. Let's open this up. We have a binder. Whoa, oh my gosh, this packaging is really cute actually. Ooh, there's like a paper curved ruler in case you don't have a plastic one. There's a soft measuring tape, a pen, two pins, some tape, and this little mini binder, which contains, oh my goodness, all the different things you would need to trace to make all these different things. Whoa. I'm jumping in here just to thank Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of Function of Beauty, and I'm kind of not sure how that's possible if I'm part of your algorithm, but they are customizable hair care delivered to your door, a little piece of self-care in a bottle. I tried Function of Beauty for the first time earlier this year when Alexandra Gator made over my bathroom. The walls got painted a nice seafoam green, so obviously she picked out the seafoam green shampoo and conditioner for me. I know it sounds a bit extra, but Picking the hair color is part of the custom process, so you might as well make the match. On their website, it's just a two minute quiz. You input your hair type, hair goals, personal preferences, your color, and your fragrance. You also get to choose your own name printed on the bottle, which is a really cute custom touch. Mine says Wendy, obviously. And there are no parabens, sulfates, GMOs, toxins, it is 100% vegan and cruelty free. Oh, and also their boxes are now 100% recyclable and these plastic bottles are not virgin plastic. They are made from post-consumer recyclable material. These are all things that I love to see. The hair goals that I set out for this one and my next set of bottles I already have are the same. Fixed split ends, that was especially important back when my hair was a little bit longer too. Shine, I guess you can be the judge of that. <laughs> Soothe the scalp. I did have some dandruff issues earlier this year. Thankfully that has gone away. And thermal protection, since I do heat style my hair and volumize because sometimes they can, they can lie a little flat. My current one are sea foam green and a very fruity smell. Mm, I believe it's like mandarin peach. It's it's really good. And then the next one to mix it up, I got pink and orange as well as a more herbal scent. Lavender is what I went with. Woo! I actually wasn't a huge fan of lavender, but turned the corner when I started treating my shower as like my own quiet spa time. And now I love it. If you're feeling ready to finally give Function of Beauty a try, check the link in the description. You will get 20% off your very first order. For the next while, I tried to get a hang of following the instructions. This is not because they were complicated. It's just because I wanted to make sure I did everything right. Since for context, method one took nine measurements and this bodice is all just based on one bust measurement. This is like those TikToks of people who show you that your wingspan is your body height or your nose is the same length as your thumb. You want to believe it's real, but there's no way it's real for everyone, right? 
There's a lot of footage here, but I'm just gonna try to summarize. This was a kind of disappointing first try because as you can see, there are some bulges that I didn't like. And we also had to figure out the size and location of the waist dart ourselves. However, I realized that a waistcoat was not really an apples to apples comparison with the fitted bodice that we had in method one. So I went back into that little binder. I found a pattern that would give us a better comparison and no guesswork. So now it should be a true test. So this is the design I decided to go with since it has a shoulder dart as well as a waist dart. We're just gonna ignore the sleeves and the skirt kind of works out perfect. And on the back here, this is the design that I'm tracing. This is the front, this is the back, and I'm stabbing the pin through the measuring tape in the hole that corresponds to my bust measurement, and then poking all of that through the middle of this X. I'm swinging the measuring tape around, and wherever there's a line, I line up the measuring tape and draw a dot at the distance indicated. We connect them all for the front, connect them all for the back, cut it out, and that's your finished pattern. This time around, I was just flying through the process. It's actually very satisfying. Just draw a bunch of dots and then some lines to connect them and some curves. One tip that I did learn from the class I took is that when you get to the darts, you can just connect them with this huge moon shape. You'll crease the outer rim of the dart and fold that in to touch this other line. Now you're basically pretending that the dart is in place on the paper. And then from there, you can cut straight across. I did that same trick on the rest of the darts and then I cut out one symmetrical front and two backs from this pink woven fabric. I'm just popping in to make sure I clarify. The letter low design does not include seam allowance, but when you're trying to design your own bodice block, you only need to add seam allowance here at the shoulders and at the sides. Don't add it yet here at the armhole or the bottom because you need to be able to see if this line follows your body exactly. Back at my dart pinning ways, just poking through the line so that they are naturally brought together in happy matrimony. I sew them all in place and let us see how this fits. Okay, once again, I noticed the neck hole crept a little bit up on my neck. It's actually kind of amusing that that was a consistent thing between the two methods. It was more like a, it's not you, it's me type of thing. The armholes, they seem pretty close. Maybe you could afford to take in a little bit of fabric at the outer edges of the shoulder seam to smooth it out. The waist is also a bit loose, but that makes sense because I was using the bodice of a shift dress as my template. So I can just take in some fabric at the bottom darts to fix that. But honestly though, I'm actually really shocked that these are all pretty easy and minor adjustments. I sewed in those modifications and then we tried it on again. The problem areas seem to have improved. The only thing I'm noticing now is that there's a one and a half centimeter seam allowance in the back when there should have been zero. So I'm gonna take that out of the pattern. And this is optional, but I want to bring in the neckline sides about three centimeters since this neck hole is for a dress with a relaxed fit, but I'm aiming for something that's a true bodice cut. Here is a side-by-side -side of my first and last draft following the In The Folds blog. This took nine body measurements, and honestly, I feel like we landed really close from the get-go with just a few modifications to get it perfect in the second try. And here is the side-by-side -side of my first and last draft following the letter low kit. This was all born out of one measurement. I feel like I've said that so many times, but I'm just so in shock. On top of that, most of our adjustments were because I was aiming to get a bodice block out of a dress. I had to get Julia to try drafting her own to test this on a different body size. And again, not too far off. In fact, her fit problems were almost identical to mine, which is a type of consistency I can appreciate. The back still needed a whole one and a half centimeters taken off each side. The neck again was a bit high in the front and the front lower darts again were a bit loose. Also, maybe this is the only notable difference, but because she's petite, some of the fabric needed to be taken in at the shoulders, but all of these 
very easy adjustments. To really lock this in, we had to go test this on a third person. Julia's friend, Julie, typically wears size medium to large on top. So we asked her if she would send us her one bust measurement and here's the notes. It was tight at the bust line so the front darts could be let out a little bit. The front hem could also be brought down to accommodate a larger bust size, but the neck hole, arm hole, and waist was pretty good. So three out of three. If you're happy with the patterns you've drafted, one way to use them over and over is to get them put into some thicker cardstock, front and back of in the fold and front and back of the letter low system. So taking the bodice that we drafted from the website blog, what are you looking for? Okay, taking the bodice drafted from the website blog, those can be modified into the pattern pieces needed to make a crop top. We'll make a crop version so we can just focus on the fit of the sweetheart. This is the modified front. See, it's got a little, it's like that uh, one fancy parentheses. And the back is a little bit simpler. There's no sweetheart. Let me show you how to go from the pattern to these smaller drafted pieces that give you exactly what you need. Now the back is pretty straightforward. We added a little bit at the bottom for safety so you can cut it once it's on you to the exact length you want. There is seam allowance for this side seam sticking out and then the back middle is pretty much aligned. Because this one was a super snug armhole fit, we backed it up a little bit just so that there's a bit more breathing room for the arm. And the dart you can pretty much copy exactly from the back bodice. The front, however, a little bit trickier. There's this big dart at the top which we don't want in the final design. And so what you do whenever there's a dart where you don't want it to be is you can try to migrate it. I'll show you this super quick on paper and I'll put a link in the description to give you more visuals on how darts can be rotated and migrated around their pivot point. When you wanna migrate a big dart like this out of the way so that you can have a smooth top in the end, you don't have to do it with scissors, but I'm gonna demonstrate visually using scissors. First, I'm gonna cut out this entire dart gap as well as this bottom entire dart. The nice thing about this pattern is there's one really clear and concise pivot point right here in the middle. And to remove this top dart, basically you're taking the pattern, bringing these two closer together, and in doing so, as you can see, the bottom dart got bigger. That kind of more closely matches the big bottom dart that we have on this one. And just like how this is smooth, now this top chest area can be smooth too. I'm cutting little notches to help me note where the dart is. And then I also take a washable marker to mark the peak of the dart and then connect the dots. Here's the complete front and here are the two backs. First, I'm gonna pin all the darts in place and sew them down with a straight stitch. Next, I sewed the back's right sides together down the middle and then sewed together just one of the sides but wrong sides together. That gives us a flap of fabric that is exposed for us to use for binding. On the opposite side, I pinned the invisible zipper and sewed it in. The only thing a bit unconventional is that I purposefully sewed it so this flap of fabric would be exposed again for binding purposes. Okay, it's a bit loose. I'll suck in more in this back middle seam to tighten it up. I cut this with an extra one inch of safety, but it looks like if I followed the pattern exactly, like one inch below here, we would have landed right on it. Here, there's like a little bit of a bulge. So I'm hoping as I slim down in the back, that'll go away. Yeah, let's give that a try. I love this top when I'm sewing because it's just like, whoop, you can try it on. I added a front center seam because I noticed in the original, they have one of those. And then the back, I took in a little bit more so that now, as you can see, this is like lying flat all across the armhole. To really imitate the Paris Georgia piece, I've got this satin bias tape. There's an order of operations. This is the sewing bed mass. If you're new to bias tape, I'll give you a really quick tour. When you open it up, you'll see these three creases. And when it's closed, you'll also notice one fold is a little bit shorter than the other fold. So we're gonna open it up and sew inside the crease that belongs to the shorter fold. First, sew that crease to the wrong side of the fabric, then let the bias tape fold naturally around the edge and top stitch along the taller fold on the right side of your fabric. This gets you a nice and clean finish. The next order of operations is the armpit. I'm going to just do a continuous bias tape here on this armpit and this armpit. 
After the armpits, the next order of operations is the bottom trim and then the top opening, which also includes the straps. Just make sure you cut one piece that's long enough to bind the front, the back, and the two shoulder straps. I start in the front and once you're at the back, you just join together the two ends, cut off the excess, and repeat that same method of sewing in the crease on the wrong side, letting it flip over naturally, and then top stitch on the right side of the fabric. The last tip is to add a tiny little stitch in the front of the Sweetheart V to give it a nice little pinch. And here is how this little top looked after I followed my new bodice blocks for a perfect fit. <laughs> Don't forget to pop up in the description. I put links to all of the past videos where I referenced my own bodice block so you can get a taste of the potential that you now have. Hopefully you can see from this video how valuable these bodice blocks have been to me. Money and time well spent. As usual, more photos of this top will be on my Instagram, at withwendy. And don't forget, if you make any of my things to use hashtag madewithwendy so I can find it and shower love on it. I'm actually really impressed with how this turned out. There's a little bit of fabric tugging here at the little peak of the sweetheart. Peak? Valley? Valley of the sweetheart. Valley of sweethearts. That really does sound like a book, doesn't it? If you're all the way here without subscribing, just subscribe. Hit the bell notification. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!